Lesson three in module five is on chance experiments with equally likely outcomes. Okay, so we're going to talk about what does it mean to be an outcome of a chance experiment. Okay, so there's some kind of important terminology in here. Concept hopefully isn't too hard, so don't overthink it, but we really need to make sure we understand what we're talking about. So it says Jamal, a seventh grader, wants to design a game that involves tossing paper cups. He tosses a paper cup five times and records the outcome of each. An outcome is the result of a single trial of an experiment. We're going to try that again, okay? In fact, I will just underline it. The result of a single trial, okay? So outcome is just one thing that could possibly happen, all right? So when, um, and I know this isn't scan real well, but Jamal was doing this. You can see this paper cup here. Here it's on its side. Here it's standing, you know, straight up. Here it's upside down. There's the bottom. Looks like it's on its side here and it's on its side here. Okay. So it said Jamal, Jamal noted that the paper cup could be landed one of three ways. On its side, right side up, upside down. So on its side here, that is a possible outcome. Right side up, like this one right here. You can see the kind of cup here, right? Um, sorry, this, like I said, didn't scan very well. Okay. Um, this right side up, that's an outcome. Upside down, like this one right here, that's an outcome. Because remember, an outcome is a single trial. Okay. So if you get it on its side, that's an outcome. If it's upside down, it's an outcome. Okay. So what is the set of all the outcomes, right? It says the collection of these three outcomes is called the sample space. The sample space of an experiment is the set of all the possible outcomes, all the possible outcomes. So an outcome is a single trial, a sample space, sample space is all of them, okay? For example, a sample space when flipping a coin, what are the outcomes you could get? Heads, tails. The sample space when drawing a colored cube from a bag that has three red, two blue, one yellow, four green cubes is red, blue, yellow, green. Sample space. Doesn't say how many. We're not talking right now is what is the probability that you're going to get red or the high probability you're going to get green. We just want to know what are all our possible outcomes? What could I, what cube could I grab out of that bag? So again, don't overthink it. Okay, this is what I mean by terminology, right? The words outcome and sample space, okay? Outcome is that single trial. Sample space is all the outcomes, all the possible outcomes. Again, not focusing on how much of each one. All right, so let's look at some examples here. For each of the following experiments, list the sample space. For example, all the possible outcomes. So, drawing a colored cube from a bag with two green, one red, ten blue, and three black. When I reach in there and I grab a cube out, what could it possibly be? Well, it could be green. It could be red. It could be blue. And it could be black. Sample space. Okay? All the possible outcomes. Again, I know that 10 is more likely, but that's not what we're worried about. We want to know what type of outcomes we could get or what kind of outcomes we could get. Tossing an empty soup can to see how it lands. Well, that would be kind of like a paper cup, right? So it could land on its side. Or, sorry, hitting buttons here. It could land right side up. Or it could land upside down, just like the paper cup. Assuming that there's a top and bottom to this, right? How about shooting a um, free throw in a basketball game? What outcomes could happen? What could happen? Okay. Well, we're either going to make the shot, it's going to be a made shot, or a missed shot. Okay. You either make it or you don't make it. Okay. How about rolling a number cube? Like dice, right? One dice is a die or a number cube with the numbers one 
through six on its faces. What could possibly land face up when you roll that die? Well, you could roll a one or a two or a three or a four or a five or a six. Okay, so notice we're just listing the outcomes. Okay, what about up here at number five? The word probability. Okay, what are the possible outcomes? Now pay very close attention to this one, okay? I could, if I just selected one of the letters out, right? I could select P, or I could select an R, or an O, or a B, or an A, or a, do I write B again? B is already right here. So you don't have to write B again, okay? Because it's already there. So an I is next, an L, don't write I because you've already written it once. Because again, we don't want repeats. Set, sample set is just what possible outcomes, okay? So even though there's two I's, we don't write it twice. There was 10 blue. We didn't write the word blue 10 times, right? Um, and then what do we have? I and the, or L, not the I. We have T and we have Y, okay? So that's why I said pay attention to this one. Um, no repeats, okay? No repeats. All right, how about the spinner here? What are my possible outcomes? Well, I could roll a one. I could roll a two. I could roll a, well, three or four. Here's the deal with sample space. I could just keep going around four, six, eight, seven, but it's really helpful to put them in order. So I'm gonna kind of jump back here and put a three. Because obviously if we're figuring out what the outcomes are, we wanna be able to find them quicker or easily. So no repeats. Try to write them in order, okay? Four, if you don't write them in order, not a super big deal. Five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. That way I didn't miss any. Okay, so when we're doing outcomes in sample space, we're not concerned with the probability of each one happening, but we're really just listing all of our possible outcomes.